السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معاكم دكتور هيثم حليفة استشاري طب الطوارئ والحقيقة إن إحنا المحاضرة بتاعتنا النهاردة حابين نتكلم على موضوع مهم جدا هو الرينال ألتراس الحقيقة في الرينال ألتراس هو إحنا حابين في البداية نسأل سؤال إمتى إن إحنا في قسم الطوارئ أو في قسم البطنة بنستخدم الالترا ساوند او بنستخدم الرينال الترا ساوند وين تو يوز ذا رينال الترا ساوند يوزلي اكشولي وي هاف ا لوت اوف يوزز اوف ذا الترا ساوند سبيشالي ان ذا ايمرجنسي ديبارتمنت اس وي كان يوز ذا رينال الترا ساوند اف ذا بيشن كم تو ذا ايمرجنسي ديبارتمنت كومبلينينج اوف فلانك بين اور لوين بين اف ذا بيشن كيم وذ رينال ريتنشن اف ذا بيشن ان ذا لابس هي هاد هاي كرياتينين So I'm suspecting a huge renal failure. If the patient came with a presentation of the hematuria, if the patient has a loin pain and fever and passing urine, so I'm suspecting acute pyonephritis or renal abscess. If I, if I am suspecting a renal mass in the ultrasound, so I have to do the renal ultrasound. If he is a trauma patient, as a part of the trauma patient, we are doing the renal ultrasound. So. Which group we usually use in the renal ultrasound, uh, in the renal focus ultrasound? Usually, we are using the curvy linear group, uh, and the patient usually should be evaluated in two planes. Where, when I am evaluating my patient in a two plane, so I can detect all aspects of the kidney in the long axis and in the short axis. So, where I will put my probe? As you can see in the image, we are putting our probe in the, uh, from the level of 7 to 9 intercostal space, mid axillary. And actually, we are, our marker, we are putting our marker to the head of our patient. If I couldn't get my view, so I will ask my patient to take a deep inspiration and hope and uh, to get the kidney to go down. And if I couldn't see the kidney, I can go to more posterior and the posterior axillary line, and this is called the posterior approach. So when you put your probes in the mid axillary line, we do slight rotation, slight rotation with the probe to make the marker directed more to the back. Why we are doing this step to avoid the rep shadow? Because the rep shadow will obfuscate the image from the kidney. So. Uh, don't forget, while you are examining in the long axis, do sweeping from anterior and posterior to see all slices, all surfaces of the kidney from the anterior part, from the upper part to the lower part. Uh, while, uh, while you are doing the point of care ultrasound in the kidney, you could see the cortex. Uh, you could see at the beginning, you could see the cortex. Then you could see the pyramids, and after that, you are looking to the pelvis, the renal pelvis, and to the collecting tubules and back. Of course, as you see in the renal pelvis, that in a normal kidney, the renal pelvis is usually collapsed, it is usually more bright, more hyperechoic, and you could see that the pyramids is a triangular in shape, and the pyramids is usually hypoechoic or an echoic in comparison to the cortex. Okay, after that you have to rotate your probe 90 degree to see the kidney in its circular, in its short axis uh, plane. And after that you will do up and down, up and down sweeping. And this is step is very, very important because you see all surfaces of the kidney. Now, we check the kidney in the right side, let's go to the left side. At the beginning, you will put your probe in the level of 7 and 9 in the coastal space. But the left kidney is more posterior and more superior than the right kidney. So you have to go to a little bit to the you have to go to a little bit to the upper upward and to the back of the kidney. As usual, we will do slight rotation to make the marker more directed 
to the back because this step will avoid the inter uh, the ribs to to shake the kidney between the intercostal space. If you couldn't see or find the kidney, please ask your patient to take a deep inspiration and hold. And if you couldn't see the kidney, make the patient to uh, to sleep on the right lateral pituitary so you can get the kidney from the posterior side because the kidney in the left side is more posterior than to the other side. So we are rotating the marker slightly toward the back. We can shake the kidney between the ribs. So this is to shake the long axis. We are sweeping from anterior and posterior. We are looking to the cortex, to the pyramids, and to the renal pelvis. After that, we will switch the kidney by 90 degree to see the kidney in a circular uh, shape. Actually, when we are looking to a uh, renal stone in the periuretary junction, we see it uh, properly in this position. After that, we are sweeping from upper uh, superior to inferior and from inferior to superior, trying to find any abnormality or renal stone. So what we are looking in the kidney, actually we are looking to the 4C. The 4C is the contrast. We are looking to the contrast. Is it, uh, the contrast is different uh, the kidney usually is more hypoechoic to the liver. So what, is, what about the contrast? What about the contour? It is regular or irregular. What about the collecting system? It is dilated or it is collapsed. What about comparing the two kidneys uh, together? So this is the normal kidney. As you see in the two image, usually the kidney is more hypoechoic uh, to uh, regarding or in comparison to the liver. But what if you could see that the kidney is more hyper so this is usually occur in the renal failure. And you are looking to the contour. Usually the, the, the kidney has regular surface as rounded contour. If the uh, surface uh, is not regular, uh, it is uh, irregular, it is sharp, so this may, this may be a sign of the chronic renal failure. Comparison, we are comparing the two kidneys on the two sides by eyeballing uh, roughly. The two kidneys must be uh, usually the same size. Uh, if you are taking measurement, the length of the kidney is around from 10 to 12 centimeters. The width is from 4 to 6 centimeters, and the parenchyma is around 13 to 25 millimeters. Uh, after that, we are looking to the collecting system. The collecting system, I'm looking to the collecting system to check if there is high necrosis or not. And as we know, the ultrasound is highly sensitive in detecting the hydronecrosis around from 80% to 94%, and the specificity from 82 to 99%. So we are looking to exclude the hydronecrosis. We are excluding the hydronecrosis in our patients. Uh, actually, what are the causes of the hydronecrosis? The hydronecrosis is usually maybe due to internal cause, like stone, maybe external cause like uh, compression, maybe congenital hydronephrosis fracture, maybe physiological hydronephrosis. Okay, the hydronephrosis also may be unilateral or uh, bilateral hydronephrosis. Okay, now we could detect, if you look to the collecting system, you could see that the collecting duct is not collapsed as usual. It is not hyper but you can see an echoic uh, uh, collection inside the uh, tubules. So this is a, is a degree of the hydronephrosis. Uh, this is, is a degree of hydronephrosis. Okay, so what are the degrees of hydronephrosis? hydronephrosis? The first degree or the mild hydronephrosis, in the mild hydronephrosis you could see that the collecting duct or the collecting system is enlarged, is dilated, it starts to be an echoic. After that, in the moderate type, you could see that the pyramids start to be ballooning and it start to change in the shape from triangular to circular. In the severe uh, form of hydronephrosis, you could see that there is loss of differentiation between the pyramids and the collecting system. So this patient, let's check in the collecting tubule in his kidney. You could see that it is slightly dilated and there is an equoid collection inside. So this is, this is mild hydronephrosis. Okay, let's check the next one. 
please look to the collecting system in this image. If you look to the collecting system, you could see, uh, so we we'll go back to the last, uh, the previous one. Uh, if you look to the collecting system here, uh, you could see that it's collapsed. So this is normal one. After that, in this one, you could see that the collecting system is dilated. Also, the pyramid is rounded. And uh, this is a moderate hydrophrosis. Uh, after that, we could see this image that the loss of differentiation between the collecting system and the pyramids. So this is severe hydrophrosis in this patient, and it may be due to pelvic ureteric stone. If you could notice at the junction of the pelvic ureteric stone, you could see hyper echoic uh, mass uh, and posterior acoustic shadow. So this is the cause of the severe hydrophrosis in this patient. Okay. Uh, please don't confuse between the renal cyst and the hydrophrosis because the renal cyst is rounded, it's eccentric, but the hydrophrosis is at the center of the kidney. Okay, what about the renal cyst? It's usually anechoic, it will be fine and posterior acoustic in house men. What about the renal stone? The renal stone uh, it is hyper echoic, it may be found inside the kidney or at the proximal or distal ureter. It's hyper echoic with the posterior acoustic shadow. So this is the uh, uh, renal stone and the pelvic ureteric stone. You could see in this image the pelvic ureteric stone as we see in this arrow. Uh, and you could see that the kidney will hide in the process. Uh, okay, so what about this kidney? The kidney is hyperechoic. There is a loss of differentiation between the pyramid, the collecting system, and the uh, cortex. Also, it is irregular in shape, it is small in shape, so this is a chronic renal failure, and also it is hyper-echoic regarding to the liver, so this is a sign of the chronic renal failure. You could see that the kidney loss of differentiation and hyper-echoic in comparison to the liver. Okay, so this is the chronic renal failure. Uh, HIV nephropathy, also you could see uh, that the kidney is degree of renal failure, uh, you could see that the kidney is hyper uh, and irregular in shape. Okay, what about the renal mass? We could see, see the renal mass may be solid, may be heterogeneous, not well demarcated, and this is uh, most probably, more probably it is a malignant mass. Uh, the infection, it's very rare. Uh, if the patient has pyonephritis, you couldn't see anything in the ultrasound, but just the patient has tender, uh, tender line and he has pus in the urine and has fever. Uh, but if there is some sort of renal abscess of or emphysematous pyonephritis, you could see in ultrasound, here you could see the emphysematous pyonephritis, we could see the dirty shadow of the air. And also in this part, we could see the renal mass as an echoic collection of this patient. And this is not very common. Okay. What about the perinephric fat? It is a double line sign, uh, and uh, the double line sign, it may be a little bit confusing uh, in a collection in the hepatorenal pouch, but we see that the collection is more uh, anechoic, and the perinephric fat between them, you could see hypoechoic structure. Okay, what about the bladder? We check the bladder if there is a, 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 some sort of urinary retention. Also check the both avoid the residual volume or the bladder filling. Actually, we can detect the amount of urine inside the bladder by getting the transverse plane, the longitudinal plane. In the transverse plane, we will check the length and the width. And uh, in the longitudinal plane, we would check the width. And by multiplying each of them with uh, 0.75, we could get the volume of urine in CC. Also, we check for the thickness of the bladder. If the thickness of the bladder is more than three millimeter of the bladder wall, if the thickness is more than three millimeter, well, it is the standard, so this is significant. And if it is more than five millimeter, well, it is non-distended, so this is also significant. Okay, let's take cases and scenarios. Okay, we have a patient. The patient is six years old, male, he came to the emergency department while he has breathlessness and he had decreased urine output. He was tachycardic, 
and the cabinet saturation is normal 95 on examination of the chest you could uh, listen to the air on both sides and no added down by investigation you could see that there is high creatinine it is around five so what's your professional diagnosis this patient is complaining of two complaints dyspnea and increased urine output the vital signs heart rate is high respiratory rate is high and in the labs he has the keratin is five so the keratin is five this is a case of acute kidney injury it's a case of renal failure so we have to know what is the type of the renal failure and what is the approach to the renal failure in our patient could we check our patient only with the renal ultrasound or we have to check other systems like heart as we say like the lung to differentiate the different types of the renal failure so actually the renal failure may be pre-renal pre -renal due to maybe cardiogenic problem or hypovolemia it may be renal due to uh, renal damage direct damage may be due to drugs or uh, viral infection and it is post renal maybe due to obstruction that may be congenital or uh, other sort of obstruction so we will check four systems we have to check the heart we have to check the lung and we have to check the collapsed ibc the ibc and the kidney in this photo what about the heart the heart is hyperdynamic the ejection fraction is good but the heart is hyperdynamic what about the lung the lung is normal we couldn't see the lines in the lung what about the ibc the ibc is collapsing and what about the kidney the kidney is normal so our patient has renal failure his kidney is normal and he has pre-renal uh, a hyperdynamic heart and collapsed IBC. So this is some sort of renal failure. And of course, this renal failure is due to maybe hypovolemia, maybe some vomiting or dehydration. So this is the cause of the renal failure in our patient. So let's take the next one. Patient 60 years old, he came to the emergency with this near the your output. What about the vital sign? Heart rate is 130, he is tachypnic on 30, Saturation is okay, but on examination, we could listen that there is some crepitation, some basal crepitation is bilateral, and by the investigation, he has in high. So, this patient has a renal failure. Which type of renal failure? What system you are going to check? I would check the lung, the heart, the IBC, and the kidney. So, let's see our patient. If we uh, look to our heart, we could see that the mitral band yeah. does not come to the septum, so this is some sort of low ejection fraction. What about the lung? The lung, we could see the B line. What about the IBC? Bad. The IBC is yeah. congested. No. What about the kidney? Does that, kidney? Does that valve hit so the So this here? is a pre-renal failure, and this is because of cardiogenic, uh, uh, yeah. maybe does that, cardiogenic shock. Or does that valve come up and hit the septum here? Failure. Oh, okay. What about the patient? I will not give fluid. I will give inotropes, and I will do dialysis for my patient. Okay, let's go to the next scenario. Six years old, main patient. He came to the emergency department with dyspnea and decreased your output. He is tachycardic. He is tachypnic and his saturation now is decreased. 88% on examination, we could see carabitation on both sides and creatinine is five. So this patient has renal failure. Which type of renal failure? I would check the core system. I would check the lung. I would check the heart. I would check the IBC and I would check uh, the kidney. Okay. Uh, what about the heart? The heart, we could see that the mitral valve is not kissing the wall and Here? the left ventricular is not uh, compressing very well. So I have some sort of heart failure and injection fraction. Yeah. Does, that, no injection fraction. does that valve the up and hit the septum? Because Here? we could see the B lines. The both kidneys it seem to loss of corticomedullary differentiation Bad. is lost. Yeah. So does that, I have some does that valve come up and hit the septum? And I have some sort of renal really failure. So this patient has acute on top of coronic renal failure. Okay, next scenario, our, our, our main patient, 40 years old, he came with a pain in the groin, related to the groin, all vital signs is okay. So I will do the ultrasound to exclude the presence of a stone. On the right kidney, we could see that the normal kidney, but about the, what about the left side? We could see that there is a degree of hydronephrosis. It may be severe hydronephrosis and the blood is normal. So we are suspecting that there is renal stone unilateral hydronephrosis. Okay, the last scenario. Uh, we have a newborn 
baby, he came with respiratory distress, distress, no urine output, he's tachycardic, he's tachypnic, his situation is okay, and his abdomen is distended and carriette is fine. So this baby has renal failure. Which type of renal failure? We started to shake the kidney. On both sides of kidney, we could see that there is hyponephrosis and we could see some sort of distended bladder. So of course, this is a post renal failure because of congenital obstruction maybe after the uh, urethra or this level. Okay, some pairs and bit folds. Uh, if you could find mild hyaluronephrosis, it may be due to overhydrated patient for brother or pregnant patient. And if you could see underhydrated patient, you may not have hyaluronephrosis, but because he is underhydrated. Uh, so we are now at the end of our lecture. Uh, I hope uh, everything goes well. Now we talk about how to get the uh, renal ultrasound, how to do the procrastinal ultrasound, what is the indication. We are looking to the contrast, we are looking to the contour, we are comparing each size and we are uh, looking for the collective system. We knew uh, what about the different degree of hydrocrosis. After that, we talk about the renal failure, how to detect the renal failure, and what are the causes of renal failure, it's pre renal, renal, or post renal. And also, after that, we knew that in the renal failure, we have to check in the core system, we have to see the, the kidney, we have to check the lung, we have to check the heart, and we have to check the IVC. Okay, thank you very much.